Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this meeting of Grand Prairie City Council. I'll call it to order and ask all present to rise and join with me in the singing of our national anthem. Thanks to Mr. David Bray for that rendition of, rendition of our national anthem, and our thanks to the National Film Board of Canada for those images of our great country. Move on to the adoption of the uh, previous council minutes. Alderman Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Logan. I'll move that the minutes of the City Council meeting held September 20th, 2010 be adopted. Any errors or omissions in the minutes? Please vote. That motion is successful. And uh, next item is the uh, adoption of the agenda. Alderman Rice. I move adoption of the agenda as presented. Any uh, amendments to the agenda? Please vote. That motion is successful. Takes us to uh, the delegation portion of the agenda. <coughs> this time we'll hear from... Uh, uh, anyone who has uh, wishes to address council on any matter except the matter of a public hearing, and we had one delegation tell us uh, in advance that they wish to address us. And uh, Mr. Russell, where are you? Please come forward to the table in the center of the room, and we'll be pleased to hear you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, uh, members of council. On behalf of the Grand Prairie Firefighters Association. I thank you for the opportunity to briefly address this council during your final meeting before the election. During the past three years, all of you have worked hard to understand the fire service and its impact on public safety. You've asked very thoughtful and important questions of both our association and the administration. As a result of your efforts to understand both the short and long-term impact of your decisions, Grand Prairie has made great strides to catch up to the tremendous growth we saw while maintaining the quality of service the citizens rely on when they need it most. I'd like to take a moment to highlight a few of your successes from this term that we, are, that we feel are particularly important. Firstly, you adopted the Fire Master Plan study in the first year of your term. You acquired land for and began the process to build the third fire station, critical to the safety of the residents of the Southwest. You listened to advice from all interested parties and in the end made an informed decision on a location that will best serve the citizens of Grand Prairie. You hired the staff to man that next station, giving us time to train them and get prepared for the growth and challenge we will experience. And you began to acquire the equipment for the third station, ensuring that your investments in staff and buildings will be put to good use as soon as possible. You have supported the business plan submitted by our administration, allowing them to continue to improve the service that we give to Grand Prairie, including your acceptance of administration's specialization plan. This will make us more effective through some of the reallocation of our current resources and more specialized training to meet the growing needs of our city. You worked with sincerity toward the goal of a regional fire service with the idea that safety would improve for all parties. Although this has not happened yet, 
Your efforts lead to or led to an improved understanding of the fire service in the region. I'm confident they'll one day bear fruit. You accept our invitation to attend, or you accepted, sorry, the invitation to attend the Redmond Health and Safety Symposium hosted by the International Association of Firefighters. We extend a special thank you to Alderman Helen Rice uh, for taking the time to learn about the health and safety challenges that face our profession. As a council, this demonstrated a real commitment to the health and safety of our members. You accepted our invitation to address the Alberta Firefighters Association when we hosted the annual convention and welcomed the representatives from the firefighter associations across the province. Your message of working together in the common interest of public and firefighter safety was well received and was truly appreciated. You even took the time to come today to meet our newest recruits. This demonstrates your real connection to the front line and your understanding of the realities of the high level strategic decisions that you guys make. Together with administration, our department has become a leader in the province in many ways. Your support of the city's guiding beliefs and our fire chief, Dan Lemieux, are critical as we continue to meet the challenges of growth together. In closing, I want to applaud this council for its foresight. You have made a lot of tough decisions and commitments, paving the way for the next council to continue the work you have done to keep Grand Prairie a safe community. So thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Russell. Any questions for Todd? Thank you for your time. I just, um, um, as we discussed today, the uh, uh, Mr. Nadiak from the college is formerly with the Alberta Fire School, and he has confirmed to us on many occasions that we have good reason to be proud that provincially our fire service is extremely highly regarded. So thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Alderman Radburn. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Uh, Todd, uh, welcome, and good to see you tonight. Thank you. Um, just wanted to say that uh, that we were. I was so impressed with the eight recruits that we met this morning. I think um, they had uh, really positive things to say about the process of being selected. So uh, congratulations, kudos to uh, Dan and his team, for, and I believe you're part of that as well, uh, in terms of the process and how personal it was. They were really, really impressed that uh, that uh, the fire chief would take uh, the time to phone and invite them to join the team. So. Um, they came from different areas and different reasons, but at the end of the day, they were eight chosen from, uh, I think, a group of 140 some. So I think we've got some really excellent firefighters, and I'm sure they'll be a, a significant uh, part of your team. Thank you, and uh, we really appreciate the fact you took the time to come meet them today. Thanks. Yeah. Our pleasure. Alderman Wong. Thank you, Mayor Logan, and thank you, Todd, for coming down and meeting council and your kind words. Um, just wanted to echo what uh, Alderman Radburn said about the new recruits. They look like a really fine group, and uh, I understand that you know you're always tr looking at training that new fire fit challenge group. And yeah. it looks like you've got some good people to work with. How, how do you feel about that? I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll we'll see the the true test is at the end of the course and see what's left of them. Right. <laughs> Whip them into shape. Thank you. You guys make us proud. Thanks Thank you very much. much. This is the delegation portion of the agenda. If there's anyone else who wishes to address council on any matter other than a matter to do with public hearing, now is the time to do so. Please come forward to the uh, table in the center of the room and introduce yourself for the city clerk. Yourselves. Good evening, Mayor Logan, members of council. My name is Baron Mans, and I'm here with uh, Jeff Johnston from Aquaterra to uh, speak to the recommendation uh, coming out of the GGS committee being considered by council later this evening to provide weekly blue bag uh, curbside recycling services. And so we're pleased to speak to uh, any questions uh, council might have uh, on that option as well as the other options that uh, have been presented for council's consideration. Alderman Rice. Uh, we received some input, uh, and it hasn't gone through the normal channels just because we've canceled public works uh, meetings, but um, this gentleman was concerned that we have to continue to pay for the depots at the same time we'll be paying for curbside recycling until 2012. Could you, could you maybe address, uh, you know, that issue? 
Sure. We have current contracts with Recycle Plus for collection and processing with our current Eco systems, including the Eco Center. Um, they expire in June 2012. Um, part of that is maintaining those contracts. We approached uh, Recycle Plus to, to, to negotiate um, maybe ceasing those contracts or other options, and they've elected to maintain the contracts and ride them out to the end of the uh, end of the term, which is their right. Um, even with the curbside residential collection going forward, we would still require the, the depots for multifamily uh, uh, recycling. In, the, in that time, between now and 2012, we'll be looking at uh, a solution to deal with the multifamily uh, collection processing. And as the participation rate increases for the, the residential curbside, we'll see uh, depots being evaluated and possibly decommissioned as we see the, the participation drop off with those. Um, so it's our intent that by the end of 2012 to have a, a, a solution other than depots for multifamily, and at that point, they can be all de decommissioned. This, if I'm, and this gentleman had suggested maybe delay curbside recycling until that contract is over. And that absolutely is, a, is a still, a, still an option. But, there's gotta be a but there, or you wouldn't be recommending we go ahead. Well, I, I think our customers, uh, Aquaterra's customers have, have spoken fairly loudly that you know, they want to see curbside recycling coming in uh, to, and they want to, and they're willing to pay the extra charge to do so. Sooner um, rather than later. Yes, and you know, our, our customer satisfaction survey identified eight and 10 uh, wanting curbside recycling. Okay. And I think that's uh, it's a fairly clear message for us. Thank you very much. Alderman Wong? Just to follow up with what Alderman Rice was talking about, can we make sure that after 2012 that we are re-evaluating re those charges on the Aquaterra bill? And Absolutely, that's, that's our intent. Okay, perfect. And certainly would be the incentive to report. Yes. Any further uh, comments or questions for the delegation? Uh, just one. Yeah, Alderman Rice, get your mic on there. Okay, uh, just one more. Um, your recommendation is a single stream blue bag. That's correct. Uh, one of the alternatives you assessed was a little cart that looks like our new garbage carts that are so uh, people are so happy with, that, but except they would be blue and you would put your recycling in them. Your recommendation is the blue bag. Um, a, can you explain why and B, um, if in two, three years we decide we want to move to the carts, then could we? Sure. The, there's several reasons why uh, I recommended going to blue bags initially. Uh, one is to mitigate the financial impact on our customers in the, in the short term between now and the expiration of the uh, current collection and processing contracts. Um, I, I think it's a, to, in the order of around $2 uh, a month difference. Um, the other We've seen very, very uh, good acceptance of the carts for the waste collection, but we, you know, 99% of the people in Grand Prairie use our garbage service, where recycling is not at that participation level at this time. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly what it is, but it could be 30, could be 40, and essentially the blue bag, going to blue bag earlier would allow us to educate and get the get the participation, rate, participation rates up higher and uh, maybe justify the, the capital cost to do, to do the carts. Um, in this, in this five-year contract which we're proposing, uh, we could easily transition to, to carts you know, after 2012 and when the impact uh, is a little bit less for the, for the customers. And uh, really, once the education process has been done to the single stream and what's, what materials are accepted, uh, it's just a matter of putting in a different container if you wanted to go to carts. Alderman Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Since our the meeting on our last meeting on Thursday, I've had lots of residents of the county ask me what's going to happen with the corner depots along the corners and I forget what the the, the corner <laughs> depots on the on the corners. And so, is there any way to regulate uh, outside use of of the city's corner depots? Well, it, it's a it's a very hard uh, process to to police or to monitor. Um, what we do see, especially through the, our customer satisfaction survey, again, we see that approximately seventy percent of uh, outside residents that were polled use our recycling system. 
but ultimately this is a city program. Uh, the, our customers in the city of Grand Prairie pay for this. And uh, as again, as we, as the participation rate for the curbside increases, we'll be evaluating depots and closing them down and the, and the county uh, residents that use it will be impacted. Um, we have an agreement with, with the county for household hazard waste and we'll, uh, you know, for the Eco Center and we'll probably look at trying to get another more agreements as things to try to fit in their uh, their needs. But it'll ultimately be up to them to, to come to us as well to, help, to work with us. Alderman Wong. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Just one follow-up question on the blue bags. Um, now, these are going to be readily available at any supermarket and whatnot, and are they biodegradable bags? It's our, our intent to meet with the retailers prior to this as part of our education program to ensure that there's an adequate supply. Um, to be honest, I don't, I'm not familiar with the uh, availability of biodegradable bags at this point, but something we'll investigate. Alderman Gibbon. Thanks very much, Mayor Logan. Uh, Jeff, my understanding was that the blue bag program may actually be able to accept some different materials than people would be used to at the current depot locations. Could you speak to that? Sure. Um, when, right now, we're in the depots, we're collecting uh, uh, cardboard, paper, uh, glass, uh, plastics one, two, four, and five, including plastic bags. And under the residential curbside, we'll be able to, get, again, carry, collect cardboard, paper, uh, rigid plastics numbered uh, one to seven, which is an improvement. Uh, we won't be accepting glass or plastic bags because of the contamination factor. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, anything you guys would like to add? No. Nope. Thank you very much for the update. Thank, Thank you. you. This is the delegation portion of the agenda. If anyone wishes to address council on any matter except for the matter to do with the public hearing, now is the time to do so. Please come forward to the table in the center of the room. We'd we'll be pleased to hear you. Anyone who wishes to address council on any matter other than the matter of a public hearing? Is that on uh, Aquaterra? If you wish to speak about Aquaterra, uh, come ahead. Just come to the table in the center of the room, please, and introduce yourselves for the city clerk, yourself for the city clerk. Good evening, City Council. My name is Gail Bellwood, and I am a resident of Grand Prairie, and my concern with this uh, blue bag recycle program is I do not feel that the public was uh, surveyed adequately on this. I have phoned Aquatera, and they said that they did had a private company that did a phone survey of 300 people in Grand Prairie. Out of the 300 people, I have no idea how many voted or asked to have this. Uh, the gentleman that I spoke to, Mr. Conrad, told me that the majority of people in that survey did want this. Um, I feel that this was not done for the majority of Grand Prairie citizens. All citizens that I spoke to, people I work with, family, I know lots of people in Grand Prairie, no one wants this. For the fact is it's another added cost to our utility bills again. We already pay on my bill, I don't know what other people pay, but on my bill $7.82 for a recycle program. Now we're going to be hit with another $4 and something. Uh, I just feel myself that I think that it could have been, the survey could have been done with our utility bills where a survey went or a questionnaire went out and they should have done it that way. I don't think that the city of Grand Prairie, the public was properly surveyed on this. And not only on the utility bills, but this is what I'm here to speak for now. Me and a lot of other people in Grand Prairie are being tired of being $2 here, $3 there, a dollar to death all the time. We're always having to pay for something that we don't want. I suggested to Mr. Conrad that they could, is what could have been other ways, if people want this, that they could be paying just like they do now. If they have extra garbage, now we have the uh, fancier containers, we don't have that opportunity so much, but before, if you had more than three bags, you bought orange stickers. They still could do that for the people that want to have this recycle program. 
His comment to me was, oh no, that can't be done, and it's too costly. Well, the people that want it should have to pay for the service. The people that don't want it should not have to pay for the service. So that this is my opinion, and my not only my opinion, but the opinion of lots of people that I work with, and lots of relatives, and lots of people that I know in Grand Prairie. Thank you. Any questions for the delegation? Thank you. Thank I have you. Oops. Well, what oh. happened to you? Well, I don't know. I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> uh, just, just wait half a sec. Okay, Alderman Rice. Sorry about that. I pushed my mic on button instead of my request to speak. One of the difficulties uh, that we face is, is the cost of, of building a new landfill. Anything we can divert from the landfill will save tremendous cost in the future. Um, we're, we're seeing studies, and I don't know if you've seen any of those studies about the cost of building a new landfill, and, and it's called the NIMBY factor, not in my backyard. Um, do, would you agree that we might be better off to pay some now instead of huge amounts in the future? Uh, if we can extend the life of the landfill, if we can extend it even 10 years, we'll save in the in the neighborhood of ten million dollars. Uh, you may be right with the uh, amount of money. You know, it's a big amount of money. But the only thing, Alderman Rice, that I'm saying is that it's always the citizens are constantly at getting added on, added on, added on. We're already, like I said on my bill, I'm already paying a recycling program. Now all of a sudden we're going to get hit with another four dollars and something, and it's not just on Aquatera. It's everything. It's every time you turn around, there's something else added, added, added. I know this has nothing to do with what's going on right now, but we're going to be having to pay for pensions for for our gas companies and whether you're Direct Energy or whether you're uh, Atco. It's, it's coming down 7% on everybody's bill to pay for pensions. That's something else that's added that the, the citizens are going to have to pay for, not just in Grand Prairie, all over the place. But it's, it, what I'm saying is every utility bill you get, it's constantly adding on, adding on, adding on. And the, the program that we have now uh, for recycling uh, cardboard, that type of thing, myself, and I know lots of other people, that's working fine. Thank you. Any further questions for the delegation? Thank you very much. Thank you. This is the delegation portion of the agenda. If uh, there's anyone else who wishes to address council on any matter other than a matter to do with a public hearing, now's the time to do so. Please come forward to the table in the center of the room and give your name for the city clerk. See no one coming forward. We'll move on to the uh, public hearing portion of the agenda. Uh, and uh, I'll call to order public hearing to consider bylaw C1100164. And uh, Mr. Johnson, are you going to introduce this matter? Yes, I am. Thank you, Mayor Logan. An application has been submitted by Maxim Storage Incorporated to rezone the subject property from its current zoning of. CA commercial arterial to a direct control district. The applicant wishes to use a portion of the subject property as an outdoor storage yard for the storage of recreational vehicles, fifth wheels, campers, boats, collector vehicles, etc. Is the applicant's desire to address this proposed land use by way of a site specific direct control district? as opposed to rezoning to an industrial district or a text amendment to include uh, outdoor storage in the uh, commercial arterial district. Advertisement was completed in, in, uh, with requirements of the Act as well as the Land Use Bylaw. At the time of writing the report, there were no submissions. However, today one letter of objection was received by the Planning Department and I believe Council has been provided with a copy of that letter. The subject property is a three hectare site located on the east side of Resources Road, south of the fire hall. It is the 
portion the portion of the amendment is the undeveloped section of the maximum storage site as you can see on the overhead behind or the screen behind <clears throat> from a land use bylaw perspective the subject property is currently zoned ca commercial arterial and the purpose statement of that land use district is to provide for a diver diversity of commercial uses that are located adjacent to or are easily accept accessible from highways or major arterial roads and have a high standard of appearance and design. The subject property is also included in the high visibility corridor overlay. The purpose of the high visibility corridor overlay is to establish a positive visual impression on major arterial corridors. Just to give you an idea of the direct control district, it was drafted in such a way as to pretty much mimic the exact uh, commercial arterial district, but just include this one extra use of outdoor storage facility, so all other standards of the commercial arterial district will apply. The planning department does not support the proposed amendment. Currently, the land use bylaw classifies outdoor storage facility as a permitted use in the IG, General Industrial District, discretionary in the IH, Heavy Industrial District, and it is not currently accommodated in the IB, Business Industrial District. It is our opinion that the land use bylaw acknowledges the nature of this land use and has appropriately, appropriately accommodated it in its industrial land use districts. Outdoor storage facilities have a low standard of appearance and design. They are typically unpaved compounds surrounded by chain link fencing. And it is our opinion that this type of development is unfit for a commercial land use district, as well as a property which council recently included in the high visibility corridor overlay. Over the past five years, the planning department has received a handful of inquiries from commercial property owners inquiring about the possibility of developing outdoor storage for recreation vehicles on their commercial properties. The planning department's position in this matter has been quite consistent in that the most appropriate land use districts for this type of use are industrial in nature. Accommodating this proposal in any manner, rezoning, text amendment or direct control will make it difficult for staff and or future councils to reason why this proposal is any different from others. If approved, it is anticipated there will be additional proposals for developments of this nature in other commercial areas of the city. The current land use district and the uses contained therein, that being the CA Commercial Arterial District, are the most appropriate for this area. The Tuscan Village development on the north end of Resources Road is a prime example of an appropriate development for this commercial, commercial strip. The Tuscan Village development will provide a number of services to adjacent residential developments, as well as maintaining a high standard of appearance and design. It is administration's opinion that outdoor storage of this nature is not an appropriate use for this property, and as such, we recommend that City Council defeat, defeat bylaw C-1100-164 as amended. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Johnson? Alderman Wong. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Mr. Johnson, I was just curious as to the zoning for the adjacent fire hall and the bottle depot. Thank you, Mayor Logan. The zoning for the properties Alderman Wong has mentioned is also CA commercial arterial. No follow-up. Alderman Blackmore. Uh, Mr. Johnson, on 92nd Street and 108th Avenue, there is an RV storage yard. Um, why would that be there if this particular location is not permitted? It is in residential, in fact. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Um, in anticipation of being asked this question I pulled the file for that particular property and based on my assessment at this point it appears that that is an a, um, 
a non-conforming use of the property. Uh, reviewing historical documentation, it appears that it has been an issue, an enforcement issue that appears to have gone away and come back over time. And at this point, um, it just appears that it, it hasn't, no appropriate enforcement has taken place to. So the point, the, the point is that it's not zoned for the use that it's being made of. That's right, it is not zoned. It is currently zoned PS public service and outdoor storage facility is not a permitted use or discretionary in that district. Okay, thank you. Alderman well, Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Uh, Mr. Johnson, how many, how many outdoor RV storage facilities such as the, as the proposed ones here do we have in the city of Grand Prairie? Thank you, Mayor Logan. I'm not, I'm not uh, sure on the answer to that one. Any further questions for uh, planning department? If not, then I'll ask if there's uh, the applicants are present and wish to speak to the matter. Please come forward to the table in the center of the room and introduce yourself for the city clerk. Mike. It should pick you up very well. All right. uh, my name is uh, Frank Wright. I'm uh, the managing partner of uh, Maxim Storage. And um, I have handed out uh, um, the context of my uh, presentation, just so you could get a few chuckles from uh, the uh, trailer park boys. But, uh, there's uh, almost a siege mentality around that if somebody's going to open uh, any facility that has uh, outdoor storage, that it's immediately going to turn into a very undesirable uh, location. And uh, <clears throat> pardon me, I, I don't, that certainly won't be the case. Um, I'll begin uh, with the forward. Uh, well, I want to thank uh, various personnel at the city who've uh, helped us through the hoops uh, to understand the process. And, and uh, there's no irony in this. Uh, Joe Johnson has been uh, tremendous support. I thank you for that, Joe, in uh, leading us along on the right, uh, the right path here. Um, Rhonda Lefebvre and Val Norriskirk uh, from planning uh, through our landscaping discussions over the last couple of years have, have been very helpful. And uh, Terry McConville from Enforcement Services also had some uh, very good inputs for us. Um, again, uh, at the risk of repeating, we're requesting the land use bylaw change to convert the north end of the property into uh, first class, and I underlined first class outdoor storage area for uh, recreational vehicles which would include uh, uh, quads, ATVs, uh, fifth wheels, camper trailers, collector vehicles and uh, boats. Um, on the uh, overhead that uh, Mr. Johnson had uh, of our property, there were a few trailers in that. Those aren't ours, those are on the city owned fire hall property. So, just see, it seems to be a precedent there already. But, um, the rationale, and, and this I think is the most important, um, as a business that started in Grand Prairie in the last decade, we've had to make adjustments uh, on both our long and short term planning. Um, projections for growth proved to be a bit too optimistic and uh, there's lots of us got caught in that. Um, uh, at present, uh, in the city of Grand Prairie, there's uh, enough self-storage uh, square footage to serve a population of 80,000. So we're running a little shy on, on people there. Um, as a result, uh, our plans to expand and develop our third phase, which is the uh, property in question, uh, have been put on hold. And we estimate uh, that uh, there won't be any building out of that area for at least 10 years. So uh, be that as it may, we're still trying to make our business viable and continue to grow our cash flow uh, in order to meet our operating costs, our financial commitments, which uh, also include an annual tax bill to the city of almost uh, $100,000. Um, the bank, that's another story. Uh, one area that we have considered uh, is outdoor recreation uh, storage, or pardon me, storage of wrecked vehicles outside, but due to the current uh, designation that is not allowed. Um, 
in addition to uh, the, the request being business driven, we've had loads of requests uh, since we opened in 2006 for uh, citizens of Grand Prairie and uh, particularly in the south half of the city uh, wanting to store um, their summer wreck vehicles uh, on our property. Uh, we had no choice but to refer them to uh, uh, another outdoor storage facility, which was the one on 92nd, um, or to uh, three other facilities that are in the county. And, uh, you know, as I pointed out, that's obviously driving business out of the city into the county. And I know uh, through listening to some of the um, uh, election debates, that's, that's uh, always a concern. Um, we want to see uh, our, uh, we would like to see the, uh, the money that's uh, uh, generated in town stay here and through taxation uh, with our new tax formula with the city, we're going to, uh, the more money we make, uh, the more money the city's going to be able to get in, in tax money. Um, another thing, um, and this gets into, uh, partly into safety, because there's such a shortage uh, many people are forced to park their units illegally, and I'm sure any of you walking around your neighborhoods shake your heads when you have to walk off a sidewalk or duck under a gooseneck from, uh, from a fifth wheel that's uh, hanging over the driveway. Um, many of the uh, subdivisions have covenants that strictly prohibit this, but uh, once the developer's gone, there's no, no one there to enforce it. Um, although enforcement services does field a tremendous number of calls. And the other thing is that, uh, it, uh, as I point out here, it doesn't make for good neighbors. Um, so if we can help alleviate that situation, uh, we would certainly like to. Um, uh, relating to safety, uh, we have uh, neighbors of ours when we lived in Mission Heights whose son took a gooseneck in the mouth riding his bike on the sidewalk um, and of course you always see people walking into traffic to get off the sidewalk and around onto the road so um, those dangers are there. Getting to uh, what I feel is the main concern of planning and that's a, a visual presentation. Um, you know the, the ongoing concern is what's it going to look like and one of the main reasons for the success of our business to date has been the curb appeal. In other words, what does the facility look like when people uh, drive by? And we, uh, we track everybody who comes into the store on their computer to see how they found out about the place. And 85% say that uh, it was drive by and they like the looks of the facility and it looks, it's clean, neat, new and secure. Um, so it's in our own best interest to ensure if we do, if we are allowed to uh, develop uh, outdoor parking uh, for rec vehicles that we keep the current high standards that we have because you can't have half a good looking facility. It reflects on the whole thing. Um, and uh, again, I mentioned we want to see, uh, see the same uh, neatness, class and uh, symmetry uh, portrayed in the, um, that part of the development. Um, I'd also like to add, and it's too bad burned left, but uh, we're continually clearing litter from uh, the city ditch along Resources Road and from the Aquaterra recycle bins to the south in order to maintain our curb appeal. It's impossible for the city or Aquaterra to have a full-time crew to look after that area because we have a thing here called a west wind and um, you know that's just the nature of litter that comes on a on a high traffic uh, road. So as corporate citizens, you know, we're, we've taken that under uh, our own belt to, uh, to look after. Um, I've included a couple of pictures um, on the handouts uh, that show uh, the, uh, the first and second phase of our development. And uh, we're very proud of it. And uh, I think it shows that, uh, you know, we're, we're dedicated to uh, maintaining the current high class that we have. A couple of other uh, pictures included uh, that show that there are different ways to, uh, to store uh, outdoor uh, RVs and whatnot so that symmetry is maintained. Um, in closing, 
I just want to assure you that we're all local people. Uh, we live and work in Grand Prairie. We're proud of the city. Uh, we have a vested interest in helping make it look presentable, not only from a business standpoint, but also because it's our home. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Any questions for the delegation? Thank you, Mayor Logan. I, I find it hard to believe that there's only one RV storage place in Grand Prairie from your presentation. Is that, is that the deal? As far as I know, if there's others in some of the shady, dark industrial areas, I don't want to go there. <laughs> uh, Mr. Wright, how do you plan on increasing the population to fill your storage units? Well, I'm beyond that, personally, <laughs> but... Uh... Alderman Blackmore. Mr. Wright, how many RV, how many stalls do you think you could would end up there? Um, I'm thinking uh, somewhere between 60 and 80. Okay, okay. thanks. No more than that. Um, if I may, there's a storage out on uh, Four Mile Corner, uh, just jammed to the rafters. Like that's a county um, storage area out there. Um, but it, uh, to me, that does not look that good when you've got the cracker box scenario, things jammed in. And again, we want, uh, uh, we're gonna have uh, 12 foot uh, width uh, in varying lengths, uh, 40, 30, and 20 feet long with uh, adequate uh, uh, driveways between, so. so it and you're look looking at a gravel base. Yes, um, and the reason for that is twofold. One is that the cost of paving is is very very high, but also um, when we do build out, then we'll have to uh, do the you know repave when we put our final three buildings or four in there. Yeah. Okay. Alderman Dimer. Yes, uh, thank you. Just to uh, first comment that we I think the that many of us do appreciate the the looks of the property and the. Uh, uh, you know the the business in general, and um, there are of course some some uh, uh, huge uh, arguments against uh, changing the um, uh, the designation. And um, if if uh, you know in those dark shady areas of uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the industrial areas that are zoned for this kind of thing. Have you compared the land uh, prices between your land and those lands? I'm, I'm thinking that yours might be more valuable. Mr. Wright? Uh, no, I haven't. And, and, and of course, the reason I'm asking is because, um, you know, if, if, uh, if it's going to take that much growth of city to fill, uh, you know, the, the current business, then, then you know, um, perhaps it perhaps land in, you know, I, I think that's fairly uh, land that might sell. And so, so uh, you, you know, if, if we turn you down, it seems to me that you do have that option of trying to go to buy land in an area where this would be viable because I, I you know, absolutely agree with your business plan, uh, you know, going into that kind of market. But um, so, so you're not sure about the comparable prices? No. For land and, and, and that wouldn't be an option for us to... Um to purchase uh, elsewhere. Um, it just becomes too difficult to operate. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rice. Would you consider, um, it's a chain link fence you have, and I, I'm sorry, I'm not a very good fixer person, but uh, there, there's little things you can put in chain link fences, little uh, slats that yeah. go to, to do some screening. Uh, would you be willing, uh, if necessary, to to put those slats in that in that area that would actually screen it from the road? Um, it, it's a possibility, and I've discussed that with uh, with planning, and they uh, they. It's a possibility. Was yeah, the only they, answer they you had to get. Thrilled with that idea. Okay, I, it's a possibility. That yeah, that's all the answer bet. I needed. You Thank you. You, Alderman Dimer. Uh, yes, one thing I forgot to ask is the, um, you know, you named some of the things that you store, uh, that you would like to store, the boats and, and the quads, etc. And um, 
None of the uh, sheds that uh, you have there, I'm not sure sheds is the proper term, but uh, uh, are large enough to store quads or, or oh, small yeah. boats? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but for, for the average consumer, um, that they can be pricey if you've got a, um, you know, a two thousand dollar quad, and uh, you know you don't want to spend twelve hundred dollars a year storing it uh, mm -hmm. inside. You know. Thanks. Yeah. Any further questions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. At this point. Uh, we're open to presentations from uh, anyone on the substance of this public hearing. Uh, please come forward to the table in the center of the room and introduce yourself to the city clerk. Anyone who wishes to address council on the matter of bylaw C1100164, the public hearing. Seeing no one come forward, uh, I'll ask uh, members of council if they have any other questions of uh, information only for uh, Mr. Johnson. Marvin Given. Thanks very much, Mayor Logan. Uh, Mr. Johnson, I just wanted to be clear, the outdoor storage as it's contemplated in the uh, direct control district that's uh, being proposed is not the same as an outdoor storage as generally applied in our bylaw, is that correct? Thank you, Mayor Logan. Yes, as a uh, result of a question that arose at the first reading about, about that very um, definition of outdoor storage. We did amend the DC district, the proposed DC district to limit the outdoor storage to these vehicles that we've been talking about and no other uh, commercial or industrial equipment or materials would be permitted to be stored. It would be these recreational type vehicles only. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Wong. So Mr. Johnson, what in our land use bylaw zoning right now allows there to be a storage like the, the facility that's in place as opposed to the one that's being uh, proposed. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Yes, the, the um, I'm sorry, I don't have my land use bylaw with me right now, but I believe the existing development that's indoor is a commercial storage facility and part of the um, defining factors of that definition is that all storage take place indoors. So all, all different types of this, this uh, storage, mini storage, et cetera, fall under the commercial storage facility. Okay. Can I ask a question of our protective services director? Uh, it depends. I mean, this is for information only. Yeah, I'm just curious in terms of whether or not zoning um, for this type of storage would exempt them from unsightly premises if it should look, start to look really bad. Um, I could answer that in the sense that uh, unsightly premises is not specific to a zone. It covers all zones in the city, so I don't think it would exempt them at all. Uh, the challenge with that one is it does have to get above a bar as far as being really unsightly before that legislation kicks in, though. So. Okay, thank you. Seeing uh, no one else in the queue, then I'll declare the public hearing closed. And Alderman Rice. I move second reading of bylaw C1100164. I wonder if I might continue to speak to it. Absolutely. Speaking in favor of the second reading, I believe the applicant uh, summed it up uh, very well when he said you can't have half a good looking property. This property, as we know, is an asset. It's a it's a storage facility that certainly is aesthetically pleasing. It's maintained in a top-notch condition. The type of investment the applicant has, I can't imagine um, that he would uh, try to have only half the property looking good. Uh, because he's applied for a direct control zoning means we still have control over the property. And it's, as it relates to RV vehicles and motorhomes, um, I know several people that have them, most of which are mer worth more than my house. Um, these uh, generally tend not to be, if you're going to store it, tend not to be dilapidated and, and ugly and if they're placed properly. 
Um, it's certainly one of the things I believe, although planning may not be crazy about it, is the screening uh, through fencing, even through shrubbery uh, planted on the inside of the fence. Um, I think there's lots of ways um, the, the impact could, uh, could be minimized, although I don't believe it would be a problem even if it wasn't, and so I'm urging support of second reading. Thank you. Alderman Wong? Thank you very much, Mayor Logan. Um, I'm going to speak in favor of the motion, and I agree with Alderman Rice's points on the, uh, the existing storage unit looks immaculate. Um, I also believe that it's our responsibility to start taking or to start uh, finding places for these RVs because we don't want them in our neighborhoods. We've already made that very clear by uh, past direction at uh, committee meetings. So we, we need to find a good place to store these things, and the only way to do that is to start opening up our uh, land use zoning. Uh, I also want to address a letter that was submitted in opposition. Um, I understand that the person is worried that it's going to devalue their property. I know that anything that we do in the city, it, we tend to get complaints that we're going to get there's going to be some kind of devaluation of property, even when we twin roads that uh, are congested. Uh, this particular property is over four blocks away from from the uh, area in question, so I don't think that they have anything to worry about whatsoever. Uh, and finally, I'd just like to say that you know this type of storage, it's not really inconsistent with what you see right next to it. We do have a bottle depot, we have an outdoor storage facility, and then on the other side we'd see our fire hall. So it is kind of fairly isolated, there isn't much else commercially that could be developed in there. So I, I think that uh, it's a good fit. I know that we're worried about, if we're worried about other applications coming in, it's going to be very difficult to find another application that would be in an area that almost looks consistent for this type of uh, purpose. Thank you, Alderman Blackmore. I too am going to ask Council to vote in favour of the motion. We live in a community where RVs and recreational vehicles are integral to who we are. And in order to move those RVs off the driveway so we can actually see our neighbors and wave at them in their front room window once again, uh, we need to find a place to put those to store them. And again, as Alderman Wong has said, this location would not be uh, uh, inconsistent to be used as a storage area. The storage yard uh, at 92nd Street and 108th Avenue is in a residential area, and I do drive by it every single day. Um, I don't find it uh, detracts from the neighborhood at all. And um, um, as Mr. Wright pointed out, I am one of the people who are not happy with sending more business to the county when, and we, when we could accommodate it here in Grand Prairie. So I would ask council to support uh, this bylaw to allow this to go forward. Alderman Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Uh, myself, too, I'm going to vote in uh, favor of this motion. I believe it uh, increases value of the neighborhood. There's a lot of um, RVs in that part of the neighborhood, and it's going to save, save our little children from hurting themselves on, the, on their own sidewalks. And I believe it's a great way to <coughs> increase the value of our neighborhood. Thank you. Alderman Gibbon. Thanks very much, Mary Logan. I'm also uh, in favor of the amendment, but I wanted to highlight uh, the fact that I really am appreciative of uh, staff bringing this recommendation forward. Um, I think in the past there uh, had been a concern that this sort of thing might not have seen the light of day at the council table, um, and so I really appreciate this fact that staff worked with the applicant to move the process along and recognize that ultimately it's up to council to make this sort of decision, and so uh, I appreciate that on both sides of the fence uh, from our customer and, and to administration. I really appreciate that working relationship. Uh, I think it's the sort of thing that we need to see more of. Thank you. Any further comments or questions on the motion? Uh, members of council have made reference to a letter that was submitted to council and therefore has been part of the public hearing, but I note that at no point did we actually read that letter. <coughs> Uh, so I'm just wondering if I should read the letter at this point just so that uh, people in the audience understand the other part of input that council's making a decision on. Anybody have a problem with that procedure? Okay, this letter is regarding land use bylaw amendment and then it mentions the bylaw number. Proposed rezoning of subject property, civic address, da 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 da. Uh, the Wanderobi residence is at 9401 Avenue. 
uh, object to the rezoning of the uh, parcel of land at 7701 Resources Road to allow recreational vehicles to be stored. We feel it will be very unappealing and as a result devalue our real estate property. We would appreciate if you would take into consideration our objection to this matter and it's signed uh, just so that people understand this is part of the record for the public hearing. Any further comments or questions on the motion? Please vote. And that motion is successful by virtue of a nine zip vote. That concludes the matter. Uh, I'll go to third reading. Oh, Alderman Rice. I moved. I move third reading of bylaw C1100164. Thank you very much, Alderman Rice. No debate on third reading. Please vote. And that motion is successful. So we'll move forward then to consider bylaw uh, C1100169 to amend the land use bylaw, and I'll call that public hearing to order. And Mr. Johnson, you're presenting on this one as well? Yes, thank you, Mayor Logan. Sorry, we're just um, logging into. Okay. The proposed amendment is to allow for the development of, of a billboard sign on 8515 109th Street, which is located in the IG General Industrial District. The IG district does not currently allow for the development of billboards. The subject property as shown on the map is, um, or the air photo I should say, is located on the northwest corner of the intersection of 84th Avenue and 108th Street. Billboards are currently accommodated in the airport district, arterial commercial district, industrial business, public service and urban reserve districts. They are typically located along major roads with high traffic volumes to maximize exposure. There are standards that allow for the location of billboards contained in the land use bylaw, such as separation from billboards on the same side of the street versus other sides of the street, as well as distance from intersections. Although the zoning of this property does not allow for a billboard, the proposed location is consistent with locations of other billboards the proposed amendment was referred to Alberta Transportation. They indicated that the property is beyond any distance requiring referral to Alberta Transportation and as, as such had no concern or further comment. The standards that the city has established for billboards are very similar to or more restrictive than eight Alberta Transportation's guidelines and they are, those uh, guidelines are attached to your report. It is recommended that City Council give bylaw C-1100-169 second and third readings. Thank you. Any uh, questions uh, for information of administration? Alderman Given. Thanks very much, Mayor Logan. Um, Mr. Johnson, I just wonder, you had that uh, site photo up, and I wonder if you could um, call it up again, because in our package it's actually really difficult to tell the proposed location of the sign. Yes. So um, the... The proposed location of the sign is approximately where my cursor is. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Alderman Rice? So, uh, yeah, I guess I'm, I, that white building we used to store sand in or something, didn't we? Prairie, La Prairie group. Yeah, La Prairie Group or something. So this is actually quite far down from 84th Avenue, right? Uh, it's the... It is the property right at the corner of the intersection, and this well, is know, approximately that, uh, 100, and 100 meters and change north of 84th Avenue. And next door is a gas bar, or what is it? This is OK Tire. OK, all right. <laughs> yeah, OK. OK, got it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, oh, go ahead, Alderman Rice. So, you have to turn on your mic now. Yes, I do. So this would be different than uh, like this would not be limited to not-for-profit uh, advertising. This would be different no, than what's on the is, bypass where it must only be not-for-profit. Th this would be a commercial billboard available to anyone who wishes to lease the space for advertising. Okay. Yeah. So, 
If there's no further uh, questions, then I'll open uh, the hearing up to uh, presentations, submissions. Uh, if there's anyone uh, wishing to speak on behalf of the applicant, now would be the time to do so. Please come forward to the table in the center of the room and we'll be pleased to hear you. Introduce yourself for the city clerk, please. My name is Bert Murray Driver, president of Driver Advertising Systems. I'm the applicant for the billboard. Um, I'm mainly here to answer any questions that you might have if there are any concerns with this particular location. We, the board uh, location does meet all of the requirements that the city has set forward for billboard use. Uh, and just as a matter of course, I applaud the city for the regulations that they have in that regard. Uh, if we compare ourselves to the city of Edmonton and some other cities where billboards are prolific, I think they look bad. Uh, we have good standards in place. It's very difficult to find a, p a place to put a billboard in Grand Prairie because of the um, guidelines require certain distances in between billboards, and I think that's a good thing. Um, this is not to be confused with the portable billboards or portable signs that are seen along the, uh, the uh, bypass and other city boulevards. Um, so with that being said, I would uh, entertain or, or answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Mr. Driver. Any questions? Alderman Wong. So this is just a static billboard. It's not one of those flashing electronic ones? At this point, it is uh, proposed to be a static billboard. Uh, as to my understanding, there's no difference in requirements, whether it is a flashing board or whether it is a static board. Uh, at some mm -hmm. point in the future, we may, we may make an application to change it to that uh, if it's a, a financi financially viable thing to do. Okay, thanks. Any further questions for the presenter? Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. So this is the uh, presentation submission portion of the uh, public hearing. If there's anyone present who wishes to speak to the matter of this public hearing, now's the time to do so. Please come forward to the table in the center of the room. Anyone who wishes to speak either for or against this matter, now's the time to do so. And I'll give uh, Council one last chance for uh, questions for administration. Alderman Rice, is that a question? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Johnson, um, there is a billboard sign on 100th Street and 101st Avenue where they cannot put any signage on it that isn't associated with that building and the premise that it, it would be a traffic distraction. Uh, how, how, how do those rules differ? I think that's just an absolutely wonderful question, but it's not a question of information for this public hearing. I'd suggest asking that at Public Works. Okay. Any further questions? Joe Smiley never have to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Blackmore. No, I'm waiting for the hearing to close. Alderman Radburn. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Joe, is, uh, is Murray's assessment of the process to change the type of sign accurate? Thank you, Mayor Logan. Uh, I have to declare I'm a, um, not um, well up to speed on the sign portion of the bylaw, but that is my general understanding that it, is, it has the same standards as the billboard. It's just that what, you're, what he's applying for is a billboard versus one that has the electronic component to it. But, and if he so chooses to change that over in the future, that it would just be the matter of a development permit. The standards are the same. Thank you. Any other questions of clarification? I'll declare the public hearing closed and Alderman Blackmore. So I would move second reading of bylaw C1100169. And in speaking to that, I um, think that it's a good location for a billboard and consistent with the, the area. Any comments or questions on the motion for second reading? Please vote. That motion is successful. Alderman Blackmore, would you finish that business, please? I move third reading of bylaw C-1100-169. No debate on third reading. Please vote. That motion is successful. That completes that business. We have no items of unfinished business or reports, so I think we're down to uh, committee business. And uh, Alderman Radburn. Thank you, Mr. Logan. I move council to receive the minutes of the Council Committee of the Whole Meeting held September 20th, 2010. Please vote. 
<clears throat> that motion is successful. Any comments or questions on Yeah, I just wanted to let uh, people know this was uh, the tender for the Coca-Cola site cent center site improvements, so the tender for the demolition of the York Hotel, resolution of poverty reduction, and that was handled actually at our last council meeting. Thank you. Thank you. If there's nothing further on that item, then we'll move forward to uh, the Minutes of Public Works, Al Alderman Rice. I move Council receive the minutes of the Public Works Committee meeting held September 21st, 2010. Please vote. That motion is successful. Alderman Rice. I move that Council award tender T4754710 for the purchase of a new rubber tired backhoe loader in the amount of 107400 excluding GST to Brant Tractor LTD as the lowest bid meeting specifications. And again, this is a trade and it's not an, an increase in the fleet. Thank you. Any comments or questions on the motion? Please vote. That motion is successful. Alderman Rice. Okay, the next uh, several motions are, there was an administrative error when we passed by law C 1238A which is the local improvement project uh, on the uh, 100th Street East Service Road between 111th and 112th Avenue. A simple typographical error had two different amounts on two pages. This is simply to correct that. So I would move first reading of bylaw C1238A. No debate on first reading. Please vote. That motion is successful. Alderman Wright. I move second reading of bylaw C 1238A. Any comments or questions on second reading of the bylaw? Please vote. That motion is successful. Alderman Wright. I move we have third reading of bylaw C 1238A. Any comments or questions on the motion to have third reading? This motion must be unanimous to be successful. Please vote. And the motion is successful. Alderman Rice. And finally, I move third reading of bylaw 1238A. No debate on third reading. Please vote. And that motion is successful. Anything else you want to bring to our attention from those minutes? No, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Alderman Rice? Well, I wouldn't be happy to, but I would <laughs> answer any questions. <laughs> With a smile on your face. Then we'll move forward to uh, General Government Services, Alderman Minhouse. Thank, thank you, Mayor Logan. I move the Council receive the minutes of General Government Services Committee meeting held on September 22nd. Please vote. That motion is successful. Anything you want to bring to our attention from those minutes, Alderman Minhouse? Um, no, I'll get in the special meeting. Any questions on any of those items? If not, then we'll move on to Protective Services Committee, Alderman Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Logan. I move. Council received the minutes of the Protective Services Committee meeting held September 22nd, 2010. Please vote. Held September 28th. I'm sorry, Mayor Logan. Motion is successful. Alderman Radburn. I move Council approve administration's plans to adjust crime prevention programs and activities in order to continue to move forward with safe growth. Um, Karen presented at committee uh, quite a comprehensive document that outlined all the different activities and programs that crime prevention are involved in. And in those, she basically outlined whether that would be continued or not. Uh, there were some that were to be discontinued to provide staff time to devote to uh, uh, work with uh, safe growth and work with neighborhood uh, associations. Uh, those dealt mainly with um, education and community connections. So education in terms of some presentations, we've had up to six, I think, per year from time to time, and I think the change was to, to a couple. Uh, in terms of community connections, they've been uh, members on certain boards. Um, 
and they're going to discontinue being a regular board member, but all, but be available always when there is an item or they're dealing with an issue that requires their expertise. So that's how they would accommodate that. Um, and some are going to be turned over to other agencies to do. So uh, and to, uh, I think the, this, the social uh, survey and assets uh, survey that uh, was done in schools, and they're going to look to the school districts to, to deal with those kinds of uh, activities. So really they're uh, decreasing some activities, turning some over to the community, there might, uh, there could be uh, something that is not picked up, but uh, the committee basically felt that the trade-off, uh, the investment of time with respect to the safe growth and working with uh, neighborhoods, uh, was uh, was very valuable and would be make uh, a difference in uh, an impact in our communities. So uh, that's the context. I would uh, urge uh, my council to support the motion. Any comments or questions on the motion? Please vote. Motion is successful. Alderman Radburn. Thank you. I move council approve the proposed plan for safe growth phases one to six and support the grant reapplication of the Safe Communities Innovative Fund. In speaking to this motion, Mayor Logan, uh, the, the phases include uh, creation of community safety panels, uh, creation of neighborhood safety teams, uh, outreach and safe growth planning, community feedback, community safety uh, panel and uh, implementation and evaluation. So you see there's a progression in terms of, uh, uh, I guess, supporting the establishment of neighborhood associations and working with them uh, through these uh, phases. They will be a party too, but not necessarily the whole neighborhood association. Uh, we have had, I believe, two neighborhood uh, who may not be fully legal associations yet, but two have come forth. I think they've actually started work with one. Um, so there is interest in this in the community, and so a good, great place to start with two or three groups in the, in the community and see where it takes us. Um, so uh, the other part of the motion that's really important is um, we had applied, the city had applied for funding to support uh, uh, the safe from the Safe Communities Innovative Fund to pursue safe growth. Unfortunately, it was turned down. I think that was uh, very unfortunate and uh, very short-sighted in the part of the province. This, is, this has been well-researched. This has been uh, staff have worked through it. They have a plan. I think it was an opportunity for uh, the province to learn something about this using Grand Prairie as a model. And uh, so uh, there is another deadline in terms of funding uh, applications. And obviously this motion contemplates that that would be, uh, we would pursue that again and maybe um, the province may see fit to support that. Then we can adjust the workload of our crime prevention staff, but until that time, uh, we still think that these trade-offs are certainly uh, worth it. So I would urge council to support the motion. Thank you. Any comments or questions on the motion? Please vote. Motion is successful. Anything else you wish to bring to our attention in those minutes? No, I don't think so. Thank you. Any questions for Alderman Radburn? Not then we'll move on to Community Development Committee. Alderman Diamond. Thank you, Mayor Logan. I would move that Council receive the minutes of the Community Development Committee meeting <coughs> held September 28th, 2010. Please vote. Motion is successful. Carry on. Yes, I would move that uh, Council direct the Mayor to write a letter to the Minister Fritz, Alberta's Children and Youth Services, and to MLAs regarding support for long-term sustainable funding for, the sex for sexual assault centers. Any comments or questions on the motion? Please vote. That motion is successful. Alderman Dimer. Thank you. I would uh, move that Council approve Policy 201 Recreation Fees and Charges as per Appendix A as amended effective January 1st, 2011 to December 31st, 2011. Any comments or questions on the motion? Alderman Radburn. Mayor Logan, I would uh, suggest an amendment to this motion. 
Uh, my suggestion is that it be amended to say, Council approve policy 201 recreational fees and charges as per appendix A as amended effective April 1st, 2011 to December 31st, 2011. I'll rule that amendment in order. You want to speak to it? So I'd like to speak to that motion. Uh, since the committee, I've thought about this uh, some more. Uh, to provide a context for people, administration did uh, present to us a three-year plan to increase fees for ice rentals, pool rentals, soccer, pitches, etc. cetera. Uh, we'll provide a comprehensive document, a three-year plan. And that plan, uh, that plan's goal was to, after three years, be at an average fee, the average fee of 20 other municipalities that were surveyed, assuming a 3% increase in those other municipality rate increases over that three-year period. Um, I think the committee, uh, at the end of the day, I proposed that, uh, to change it just to, to a one-year because I do think that it is uh, appropriate for the new council, when they're looking at their three-year budget, 2012, 13, and 14, to be the ones to look at those fee increases. And also, I'm concerned about whether we need to reach that in three years or five years or what, because for a couple, for one, for the pool in particular, there are significant increases in each of three years to get to that point. So that's a bit, that's a bit of the context as to why one year and not uh, the three years that were suggested. There probably will be a three-year recommendation come later next year when we just in preparation for the three-year budget. That's a bit of the context of the motion that's presented here. When I, when I started thinking about it, I looked at, we've got minor hockey, if I got uh, um, the winter swim club, piranhas, we've got uh, indoor soccer, who have already uh, had the registrations done. Uh, they've set the registration fee last fall, and so their revenue is what it is. Um, I, the ICE user meeting, Jane did uh, just let me know that there was some mention of possible rate increases, although no number was given. But I'm not sure in terms of the soccer, Indoor Soccer Association or the Piranhas, whatever. So I'm not sure if it's fair to ask them to adjust. And uh, basically they can't because their revenue, their memberships are already in. The April 1st deadline would get us through their season of play, shall we say. And then we start a new seasonal play where associations can, if they need to, adjust the registration fees appropriately. So that's the background with respect to the, um, my uh, rationale for the amendment. Thank you. Any comments or questions on the amendment? Uh, Alderman Blackmore. Uh, would the city clerk mind just reading the dates back to us again for the amendment? And then the end date would still be the same of December 31st? Okay, that was my confusion. Thank you, Alderman Dimert. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Mayor Logan. I, I'm a little leery to support the amendment without uh, referring it back to uh, committee to hear some uh, debate on uh, how that affects uh, budgets in the Recreation Department and without hearing um, uh, you know, full arguments on that. Uh, from the people involved uh, and and as we can't very well ask uh, our director of community services to enter debate on this uh, you, you know there might be some other questions that we could ask but um, uh, her staff that could address this best I think could could probably address it at a committee meeting so I, I'm I'm leery to to support the amendment all have been given Thanks very much, Mayor Logan. Uh, I think I would be in favor of supporting the amendment. I just do actually have a question for the Director of Community Services. Um, she knew it was going to be <laughs> coming. you are going to get away with that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's my understanding that the 2011 draft budget that's already been put in place by this council uh, would have taken in, would have been built around uh, the previously approved facility rates, not any increased rates. Is that correct? Um, Mayor Logan, yes, that's correct. Okay, so even though uh, Alderman Radburn's amendment would extend the implementation time to April, there wouldn't be any loss of revenue. There'd actually still be a, uh, 
increased revenue from when the rates do take effect over what was previously approved. Yeah, Mayor Logan, that would be correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Alderman Rice. Since it's his last meeting, I don't want him to get off lightly, so I'll just say to Alderman Dimert, I wish I could agree with you, Alderman Dimert, but then we'd both <laughs> well, be wrong. Um, so I will support the amendment. Any further comments or questions on the amendment? Alderman Dimert. Uh, yes, just a, a further question then of the Director of Community Services. Jane, do you remember uh, what, uh, I believe that uh, um, our, the manager there suggested what these funds would be raised for and, uh, um, you know, what they would be used for? And uh, I cannot remember what, uh, what, what, what was said there, but I, I remember that she had suggested that uh, you know, there was a reason for this and that uh, they were used for such and such and such a thing. You don't recall that? Um, Mayor ahead. Logan, my understanding is that these would go into general revenues and the intent of bringing this report to committee and to council was to um, point out the need to catch up with the rest of the province. Yes. Any further comments or questions on the amendment? If not, uh, could I get you to put that back up on the screen, please? Thank you. Are you ready for the question then? Please vote. And that's successful unanimously. So, uh, Alderman Diamond, we'll go back to the uh, original motion as amended. Any comments or questions on the motion? Please vote. That motion is successful. Alderman Dimer. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Uh, I would move that uh, Council rescind the North Bear Creek Development Plan and the South Bear Creek Development Plan. Um, th this is uh, uh, the old plan that was being supplanted by uh, a newer plan and we just uh, failed at that time to, to rescind the previous ones. So it's more or less housekeeping. Thank you. Any comments or questions on the motion? Please vote. And that motion is successful. Alderman Dimer. Thank you. I move council approve the Crystal Center capital improvement fee to be increased to 4% uh, to a maximum of $2 per ticket. Alderman Rice. I just want to say I support this motion. I believe this is the very type of thing that avoids what our delegation talked about earlier. Uh, user fees um, eliminate the need to keep raising taxes. Or, so it, the fee is paid only by those who are using that facility. And uh, certainly you're never beholden to go to a concert. So uh, I, I support the motion. Thank you, Alderman Gibbon. Uh, thanks very much, Mayor Logan. For the Director of Community Services, could you maybe just give us a reminder of the uh, minimum uh, ticket price that would actually be impacted by this change in fees? Uh, yes, Mayor Logan. The increase would start um, in at a $25 ticket price. That's when the 4% would change, or the, the difference would be noted. Um, administration presented this as an option to committee and council um, and we're very cognizant that we didn't want to hit the lower ticket prices and make that an, uh, an undue hardship for those folks organizing events that did not have the higher ticket price. Thank you. Any further comments or questions on the motion? Please vote. That motion is successful. Anything else you'd like to bring? I have one question. Sorry. Does that kick in immediately? <laughs> Uh, Alderman Rice. Does that, does that become effective immediately? There was no date on that. Jane? Uh, yes, Mayor Logan, it would become effective immediately. Okay, thank you. Anything uh, else you'd like to bring to our attention from that set of minutes, Alderman Dimer? Just that uh, we, we had a, a very major uh, uh, report come forward, the affordable housing, uh, a draft of the affordable housing master plan. Uh, is a, a hugely comprehensive document that covered a lot of areas. 
there seemed to uh, the committee that there was a need to um, uh, say something about implement implementation, which of the various uh, recommendations would be attempted first, etc. Uh, a few factual things to clean up and some workshopping of, of uh, the master plan. So we're looking forward to uh, that affordable housing master plan, uh, very ambitious uh, project to actually meet uh, all of the housing needs uh, uh, in, in the city for those that uh, do not afford uh, market prices. Thank you. Any uh, questions for Alderman Darmot on any of the items from those that set of minutes? Not then. We'll move on to the minutes of the Special General Government Services Committee, Alderman Minhouse. Thank you, Mayor Logan. I move the council receive the minutes of Special General Government Service Committee meeting held on September 29, 2010. Please vote. That motion is successful, Alderman Minhouse. I move the council award the RFP 12-215-10 to Alcat Del Lens Canada Inc. for municipal wireless broadband initiative to the amount of $2,052,925.20, excluding GST, including a 20% con contingency to be managed by administration and approve municipal funding in the amount of Two million fifty-two thousand nine hundred twenty-five dollars and twenty cents to be funded through its reserve fund, one million ninety-eight thousand, and the reduction of the fund from the cooperative its and business application capital projected nine hundred fifty thousand nine hundred fifty-four thousand nine hundred twenty-five dollars twenty cents for the municipal wireless broadband initiative. Thank you. you Comments or for questions it? on the motion? Alderman Given. Mayor Logan, uh, I just wanted to note, and uh, I'd be stand to be corrected, but my understanding is that uh, this is actually in relation to a Build Canada application, um, mm -hmm. and so this municipal money will actually leverage uh, approximately the same amount from the provincial government plus the same amount again from the federal government, and so uh, the two million dollars here will actually return about another four million dollars into our community. Uh, and this project is actually building upon some previous successes uh, that the city has had, uh, in fact, Canada-wide uh, leading successes, such as being the first municipality to actually be granted a portion of the broadband uh, wireless spectrum by Industry Canada. And so I think uh, it puts Grand Prairie on a good foundation for being a smart city to move forward. And uh, right now, this is just building the infrastructure. Uh, the next phases, of course, will be to deliver um, improvements to customer service uh, in city operations and then finally improvements to uh, things that the public will actually see and uh, one could imagine a future where <coughs> firefighters could head off to a uh, accident in a traffic intersection and they may be able to look at the wireless cameras that are at the traffic intersection and see what they're driving to. Uh, one could also imagine a situation where uh, our municipal transit buses have wireless service for people mm -hmm. who are commuting. So this sort of infrastructure will build a lot of opportunities and uh, it's great to see this uh, investment in municipal money leveraging those uh, federal and provincial dollars into our community. Any further Thank comments you, or questions Mayor. on the motion? Alderman Wong. Thank you, Mayor Logan. I'm also very highly, uh, highly supportive of this type of municipal uh, initiative. I think it, see, it shows a lot of foresight uh, 15 years ago. If we were asked, you know, what we would do with the internet. Most of us wouldn't even know what the internet was. Uh, today, if the internet goes down, none of us can really even do any business. Uh, this is, this has the potential to really affect uh, what happens in the city from this point forward. It basically connects any piece of technology, or has the potential to connect any piece of technology to any other piece of technology within the city. Uh, the uh, 4.9 gigahertz emergency band would connect all our emergency services. Down the road, we could see real-time streaming of uh, vehicles and events as they occur, and you can allocate resources more efficiently. Uh, we, could, we could look at uh, a whole new way of talking on the phone because now that we have wireless internet everywhere, um, there's not going to be a need for the regular, the old-style carrier waves. Uh, everything can be done 
all with a personal data device. Uh, it's just amazing what the potentials are. I, I don't think we can even fathom it right now, but uh, $2 million to leverage $6 million, I think it's just a, it's, it's going to be a fantastic it's project. Fantastic. Thank you, Alderman Radburn. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Uh, just have a couple of questions relative to a couple of things. One, the 20% contingency, it seems to be like a 4,000 is a lot of contingency, so I guess uh, ask someone who can answer, please. Uh, my first question is uh, why the significantly, in my estimation, the considerable contingency. Karen? Yes, Mayor Logan, the 20% was a recommended number from our purchasing department, which is standard. That's where the recommendation come from. Okay. And second, secondly, I certainly support the concept of leveraging money so we get more monies. I just want to make sure both the IT reserve and the corporate IT and business applications capital projects, is this the type of project that those funds were set up to support? So in terms of criteria for those funds, is this an appropriate use of those monies? Karen? Yes, Mayor Logan. Um, thank you. Those funds and those reserves were set up to support the corporate network and business applications. So yes, it's in alignment with the intent for the reserve and those funds. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Rice? Uh, so, Karen, if I could go back to the contingency, um, I, although I, I really hate to, to follow Alderman Wong, who was talking in very technical <laughs> terms, this this is just one chunk uh, of, of a, a, a whole bunch of things that will interface together for the whole six million, right? This is this is one component. Yes, Mayor Logan, this is, uh, this is one of many phases that the entire wireless project is made up of. Um, and uh, Alderman Given explained it very well. And um, this is basically the backbone or the framework that the, of the wireless. And there's many components that will be sitting in and connecting to that. So you're correct. Okay, so uh, if you don't spend the full contingency, at what part do you say Okay, Mr. Anderson, Treasurer, you get this back. <laughs> Mayor Logan, sorry, that's a very good question. And, and um, basically through negotiations with, with Alcatel Lucent, we will be determining what the total cost of this will be, of course, and, and there will be an upset amount to that $2 million number. And uh, as to answer what, uh, when we will tell Mr. Anderson, you know, when the, we've hit the ceiling, um, Six months from now, we'll know the end of this portion of the project. So at that time, we'll be able to report back to Mr. Anderson. So the contingency is only for this, I called it a chunk, Alderman Given called it a phase. So uh, the, the contingency is just for this phase. That's correct. This ah. is just for this award of this broadband piece okay. of the entire project. Thank you so much. Yeah. Any further comments or questions on the motion? Please vote. The motion is successful. Alderman Menhouse? I move the council approve the implementation of single stream weekly collection blue bags for residential curbside recycling effective March 1st, 2011. Any comments or questions on the motion? Alderman Wong? Thank you, Mayor Logan. I'm going to speak in favor of this motion. Uh, I was part of the Regional Recycling Task Force, which uh, was privy to a lot of the information from the surveys that were done by both Aquaterra and Recycle Plus. There, Aquaterra did its own separate survey, and so did Recycle Plus. Both of them surveyed several hundred houses. Um, can't give away any of the uh, proprietary information, but I can tell you that both surveys were consistent in that eight out of 10 households were in favor of curbside recycling, and they were in favor at uh, roughly the price that we're looking at right now. So um, to me, that, uh, that that was a major driver behind my support. Um, also with the uh, blue bag system, the, when you buy them at the store, it's going to work out to roughly 25 cents per bag. So it'll cost you about a dollar a month if you only have one bag going out every week. You don't have to utilize that every week, obviously. I actually prefer that system over the bin because the Aquaterra bin is actually quite large. And not everyone has a place to store that large bin. So to start with one bin now and potentially down the road, if we decide to switch to a bin system, it doesn't cost us uh, that much more to do so. But, uh, you know, curbside recycling was a hot topic at the last election. 
there were so many people pushing us to get that in place. It's taken us almost three years just to, to even get that in front of council right now, and I'm urging all the council to support it. Lord Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Logan. As, as Dan said, uh, I'm excited and to support this initiative in our city of Grand Prix. Uh, we had some uh, delegations today that were uh, we're uh, bringing up the, the, the cost of, of what it's going to cost on their on their bill, and I, I believe that right now it costs to drive down to the to the local corner corner bin sorting station, and it's also from the other delegation. It's a big cost to maintain and keep those areas clean. I believe this will uh, definitely make it a lot easier to keep our city clean, and it will save a lot big cost in the long run too with our our filling of our landfill. And I encourage Council to support this initiative. Thank you. All have been given. Thanks very much, Mayor Logan. I'm also going to support the, uh, the motion. Um, but uh, one thing that I would highlight is the fact, uh, the information that we received from our Akutera delegation earlier on in the meeting. Uh, there is a contract in place for the neighborhood uh, bin system that's already there. Uh, it does run until 2012, and uh, essentially the contractor has the right to maintain that contract <coughs> until such time as it's finished, uh, which is obviously understandable. Um, but I would hope that the new council and Aquaterra uh, look at the alternatives when that system is finished in 2012, and there will be an opportunity to eliminate that current charge of that old sort of legacy contract, which uh, was mentioned is around $7. Um, and so. Uh, that will be up to the next council and uh, Aquaterra in, in 2012, but I uh, am looking forward to the time where all we're seeing on our bills is approximately four and a half dollars for curbside recycling rather than four and a half dollars plus the seven dollars for the dual system. So I uh, look forward to eliminating that fee eventually. Good. Any further comments or questions on the motion? <coughs> Please vote. The motion is successful. Any questions for Alderman Minhouse on uh, any of the items from those minutes? Alderman Minhouse, anything that oh, you want to add? Thank you very much, Mayor Logan. This was the last meeting for this council for this DGS. It was great three years. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on. Uh, there's no items of correspondence and items of delegation business. We dealt with the one. Uh, might be appropriate to have a motion to receive the. Uh, uh, submission from the firefighters for information. Thank you, Alderman Rice. I move that we receive the information uh, from the firefighters for information and thank them. Any comments or questions? Please vote. And that motion is successful. Uh, no notices of motion, and uh, so we'll move on to council member reports, and we'll start with. Uh, Aquaterra, Alderman Rice. Yeah, the recent uh, candidates forum, there was a, an allegation that um, the Environment Committee had referred an issue um, of um, rebates for the use of cloth diapers to Aquaterra and that no calls were returned. In fact, my research would show that uh, that that was not perhaps accurate that Jennifer uh, Langeld had talked to the, the lady who had requested this. Um, I believe there may have been a misunderstanding in terms of process. And um, even after all my years on council, I still get frustrated sometimes at how slowly the wheels grind. Uh, and so I would ask uh, that maybe Environment Committee in future, if it's referring things to Aquaterra, make sure that the presenters understand that what has to happen, Aquaterra does not have the authority nor the mandate to make these kind of rec recommendations or give this type of rebate. It will be re referred to Aquaterra. Aquaterra will prepare a report which it will present back to probably uh, public works or general government services, um, which of course is difficult because we've canceled a couple of those meetings. So there's an even bigger like council in turn then will probably refer it to the next budget session. So um, this type of thing, and it does take a while, 
uh, to do a, an in-depth report where you're trying to estimate the cost of such a program. It will not happen overnight. Um, I, I do not want the the opinion left that, or the perception left that uh, that Aquaterra was somehow lax in responding to citizen complaints. In fact, um, the report will be done, and as I said, we'll follow the process as, as outlined. Thank you, uh, Downtown Association, Alderman Blackmore. Uh, there are some uh, cup, uh, a couple of things happening in the downtown that uh, you are invited to. Uh, the first is there is a opportunity to meet all of the candidates in the next upcoming election. Uh, Tuesday, October 5th, which is tomorrow night from 7 till 9 p.m. in the Legion. Um, Vegas night, always a very popular night. Uh, you can roll a dice or spin the wheel to win discounts at stores. That will be held November the 19th. And the Santa Claus Parade takes place on November 28th. Begins at 1 p.m. and it actually runs eastbound down 100th Avenue, so against the traffic. Marshaled by QP. That is always marshaled by QP, who do an excellent job and is always a great fun event. And um, the weather's almost always perfect, so you can plan now knowing the weather on November 28th will likely be almost perfect. It's an election promise, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on then to uh, Grand Spirit Foundation, Alderman Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Logan. A management committee meeting on September 24th held in uh, Spirit River. Uh, a couple of updates. Wild Rose Villas project will be probably move in date will be December 1st. Uh, Amos Court and Beaver Lodge April 1st of next year. And the family housing staff uh, moving over to with the uh, office expansion, uh, the Grand Spirit, uh, probably November 15th. We started talking about preliminary budget. The uh, budget meeting is next time where we try to balance the uh, using reserve funds, rent increases, and municipal requisitions to balance the budget. That will happen next. In terms of advocacy priorities uh, for the Grand Spirit Foundation, we're looking at uh, uh, two in particular, the adequate number of uh, daily assisted living and long-term care beds in the area, and also an increase in funding to the Lodge Assistance Program. It hasn't been uh, increased by the provincial government for uh, quite a while, so those will be the two, uh, I guess, uh, particular advocacy priorities that we're going to work on. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Thank you. Intercity Forum on Social Policy, Alderman Dimer. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Uh, on October 1st, the uh, Intercity Forum uh, met with the Honorable Thomas Lukasik, Minister of Employment and Immigration, along with the Deputy Minister, his Deputy Minister, Shirley Howe, and the ADM as well, Mr. Shannon Marchant, about collaboration between municipalities, uh, several provincial departments, and the not-for-profit sector or the non-governmental organizations <coughs> in order to forge a path toward a poverty prevention and poverty reduction strategy. Uh, the minister pointed out that despite other provinces having official poverty reduction programs, that Alberta had lower rates of poverty than many of them due largely to our, this is all in quotes of course, due largely to our employment and job creation strategies. That's his analysis, mine would have diverged from that a bit. But despite some reluctance to use the P word at the highest levels of our province, uh, the, the, the minister seemed open to participating in a half-day forum on anti-poverty action on November 26th at 1 p.m. And that's contiguous with the FCSS annual conference and the AUMA convention. Uh, so, uh, thus the motion that we co-sponsored with Edmonton and Calgary at our last council meeting will be tested at this forum to see if the momentum is there for a, a three-way partnership, provincial, municipal, and NGOs, non-governmental organizations, to work on a poverty prevention and reduction strategy, which might at some future date be implemented by the provincial government, as they did with the Homelessness Secretariat. Uh, so that's the goal, and, and if it becomes a reality, we can be proud that we were one of the original sponsors of uh, the FCSS motion that officially kicked off, that will officially kick off the November 26th Forum on Poverty, uh, despite deficiencies in the way the motion was brought forward at last council. Um, so, so that's uh, the main uh, subject of the Inner City Forum and quite exciting after a lot of work by the Forum uh, in uh, getting some information on these things. And I do have a, 
uh, a package that uh, outlines what other provinces have done in this area if uh, the public or if administration is interested. So that is the inner city forum on social policy. Thank you. Multiplex uh, Building Committee, Alderman Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Uh, just three things. Meeting on September 22nd. We're at about 65% construction costs completed. Um, we're still looking at probably in the late fall of next year, October, November, for opening. Um, sending a tender for the pool score clocks out here now. And actually we're doing two, I guess it's one tender, but there's two, um, uh, two uh, what am I looking for? Uh, alternatives with respect to the quality of the clock. Uh, one is the clock that we would look to have if we get grant monies that the piranhas are applying for, and one is if we don't. So it would be just a, uh, an appropriate clock. So uh, two levels. And uh, the other thing I thought was interesting was that in terms of field house fixtures, we're now looking at, it was always the plan to have the fixtures for volleyball, basketball, and futsal. Is that how to say it, Chief? Futsal? So it is indoor soccer without the boards, with a little different yeah. ball, but mm -hmm. you play it indoors, but without boards. So that was always the plan. And also also looking at, because of, uh, I guess, some, some uh, comments from the community, they're also looking at checking out badminton and tennis as well for our field house. So I think that would be great if we could expand the number of activities that we could have in our field house. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Thank you. Peace Region Economic Development Alliance, Alderman Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Logan. The uh, next PREDA management board meeting is uh, going to be on November 5th here in Grand Prix. And as an innovation ambassador, I'm proud to be part of the 2010 Celebration of Innovation here in Grand Prix. Join the Center for, Research, Center for Research and Innovation to celebrate the amazing achievements of our Peace Country innovators. The Center for Research and Innovation will be honoring Peace Region Outstanding Innovation for 2010. <clears throat> Lifetime Achievement Award for Innovation and 2010 Innovation Voucher Receipts. These are $10,000 and $50,000 uh, vouchers. There is no charge for the event, however, uh, pre-registration is required. Also some uh, news on the table now. Uh, Preda is supporting the University of Alberta's preclinical networked medical education as they have selected Grand Prairie and Peace River to host a one-month pilot project to support training medical students in rural communities. The pilot project involves a total of 24 students who will live and study in rural areas. The overall objective of the project is to increase the number of family physicians choosing to practice in rural communities. Other provinces have found that the more, a med the more medical students study in the rural setting, the more likely the choice of a practice to practice medicine in a rural setting. This is good news to Preta, <coughs> which has been a long-time supporter of initiatives that attract physicians to the peace country. Thank you. Thank you. And Arctic Winter Games, Alderman Gibbon. Thanks very much, Mayor Logan. Uh, yeah, Arctic Winter Games are still going. Uh, a small committee has uh, continued to meet in regards to the legacy of the games. And I just wanted to uh, let Council be aware of a meeting this Thursday, the 7th, at Center 2000 at 4 p.m. sharp. And I say sharp because there's a special guest in town that evening who will be in attendance. And the special guest has a fairly packed schedule that day, I understand. Uh, so the meeting's going to start at about 4 p.m. Uh, on, the on the dot. Uh, but the meeting will be to announce the legacy of the games uh, with respect to uh, a range of capital items uh, that were left over and uh, donated to various community groups throughout uh, the region, as well as uh, the, um, the uh, fiscal legacy of the games. And so I'd enc encourage all members of council to attend and uh, certainly let the public know that that's an open event and uh, we look forward to making a positive announcement at that time. That's all I have to report. Thank you. I'll move on then to uh, round table and Alderman Minhouse, we'll start with you. Thank you, Mayor Logan. I have nothing to say that I was not even around here last two weeks. Thank you, Alderman Gibbon. Thanks very much, Mayor Logan. On uh, Tuesday the 21st, I attended the United Way kickoff at Grand Prairie Regional College. Uh, great to see Don Natchek and the GPRC team taking on the leadership of the, capital, the campaign this year. Friday the 24th, I was with other members of council at the joint city-county meeting. On Monday the 27th, I took the uh, tour at Community Village and was very impressed to see 
how the uh, City of Grand Prairie's contribution towards the project has uh, made a transformation at the facility. On Thursday the 2nd, I was at the Chamber Mixer at the Grand Prairie Live Theatre, and then later that evening I attended a Library Board Development uh, Workshop. And then finally today, this morning, uh, Monday the 4th, I attended at uh, the South Fire Hall to meet the final eight uh, new fire department recruits. And uh, so it was great to see that now we are fully staffed after uh, three waves of hiring. And uh, as Alderman Radborn mentioned, it's amazing to see that we really get the best of the best uh, out of 140 some applicants, 148 applicants that we got the top eight. And so it's a pleasure to see them. And I think they'll all be uh, great assets to the community. Um, just on the final note, Mayor Logan, I wanted to say thank you to you and all members of council and administration for the past three year term. We certainly uh, have appreciated the working relationship we've all had and the support that we've had from administration. It's been a great term and uh, best of luck to everybody in the election. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Blackmore. Um, I was also at the United Way kickoff lunch on September 21st at the GPIRC and would like to remind people that the second half of that ticket is actually breakfast with the general which is this coming Friday and that is co-sponsored by the United Way, the Chamber of Commerce and TD Financial and uh, uh, the general is General Rick Hillier who will be in, in Grand Prairie to do a presentation is a very interesting speaker. September 23rd I chaired an assessment review board hearing and I would like to thank public members Fletcher Boodle and Lee Finnebrotten for sitting on that committee. Um, it's not always an easy committee to be on and uh, they've certainly given their all. And it also now entails a lot of training which they also sat through, so that's excellent. September the 28th, I attended the final Battle of the Bone which is the United Way Chicken Wing Eating Contest which was held at Mad Hatter's. And uh, the Drillers football team took the big the big belt home and uh, we're very excited about it. It's kind of funny. Um, September the 30th I attended the uh, Chamber Mixer at GP Live Theater and um, today I was also um, at the fire hall to meet the recruits, um, the, the last batch of recruits. I just wanted to bring one more thing to the attention of the public and that is on October 17th there will be a ladybug brunch held at the Grovedale Hall, I think, um, and in support of Ronald McDonald House and Organ Donation Awareness. Um, so it's a brunch uh, with games and family fun to follow. The tickets are $25 a family or $10 an adult and $5 a child. Um, it's one of those family events that can turn out to be uh, a lot of fun and bring lots of awareness. And I'm sure that if you have um, any need for tickets whatsoever, Alderman Radburn would be happy to find those for you. In fact, he has some in his pocket he's showing me. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wong. Thank you, Mayor Logan. On Thursday, September 23rd, I attended an open house at Dominion Lending to celebrate their grand opening. Also on the September 31st, I attended the Great Northern, Northern Casino's 11th anniversary at their current location. On Saturday, September 25th, I attended the Great Canadian Dollar Store's grand reopening that's on 100th Street right across from Giant Tiger. I want to congratulate uh, the new owner, Dan Drake. On Sunday, September 26th, I ran in the Fall Classic Road Race, which was hosted by the Grand Prairie Run Walk Club. They did an excellent job. I, came, I ended up 16th out of 76th runners. On uh, Thursday, September 30th, I attended the mixer at the... Uh, the Chamber Mixer at the Grand Prairie Live Theater. They did a couple of performances, um, a couple of songs from their upcoming show, Chicago. I think they raised the bar for all Chamber Mixers. I don't know if anyone else can really uh, compete with that. On Friday, October 1st, I attended the first annual Ambulance Chasers race. And this is a, a five or 10 kilometer trail race. Uh, it's in support of the Regional EMS Foundation. I was originally asked to come out and uh, represent City Council in a suit and uh, chase the ambulance for a couple of blocks. When I showed up, they convinced me that I actually have to go and run the race in my suit. And <laughs> so I did that at carrying a suit, uh, wearing dress shoes and uh, carrying a briefcase. So that was a very interesting experience. It didn't quite uh, perform as well as I would have expected but it was a great event. Uh, Saturday, October 2nd, of course I was at the Chamber of Commerce All Candidates Election Forum at the college and I want to wish all the candidates that are running for this civic election the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wong. Alderman Rice. Uh, I, I, opened, 
I participated in cutting the ribbon on the Dave Barr play area. Um, it was it was kind of a bittersweet experience because it's a fabulous new play area, but it was the last project of the Grand Prairie Lions Breakfast Club after 32 years of providing stuff in this community and primarily um, the stuff that will enhance the life of children. That was their last project and they are disbanding, so that was kind of sad. I attended and met the, the new firefighter recruits and again was very, very impressed and particularly impressed with what they had to say about how outstanding our process is compared um, to, to other locations. Um, I attended the All Candidates Forum. Um, on October 13th, um, the uh, Alberta Chamber of Commerce along with the Alberta Urban Municipalities Association and the Association of Counties and Municipal Districts will be meeting with all the Alberta Members of Parliament at that point. It is my intent along with our Member of Parliament, Chris Workington, to uh, push forward our safe growth project and create an awareness and I know our Member of Parliament was very supportive of our last application. Um, I would uh, hope uh, not to step on Alderman Givens' toes but I would hope, uh, I'm, I'm having a secret wish this week that I would get caught reading. A lot of people don't realize how often we read, whether it's traffic signs, your computer, your Blackberry. The library has an exciting project where they're going around town catching people reading. And if you are caught reading, you're given an, a bookmark and an entry form to take to the library for some great prizes. A really neat initiative uh, and great awareness of how much everyone reads in the course of a day. So I'm hoping to get caught sometime this week. And I want to say to the rest of council, it's been a slice. Uh, as I said to Alderman Wong earlier this evening, I really hate nights like um, tonight. Uh, after tonight, the dynamic changes. Um, you know, we didn't always agree but I always felt that we worked together in a, a spirit of camaraderie and respect. And uh, I'm, I'm always glad when we don't always agree. I always say if we all agreed, you don't elect, need to elect one person. Um, so uh, I want to thank all of you. I, it's been a tremendous experience. And I want to welcome our, our uh, candidates, our municipal election candidates who are here to observe. I, Hope we didn't scare any of them away and make them sorry they put in their nominations. Too late now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Rice. Alderman Gustafson. Thank you, uh, Mayor Logan. On the September 21st, I attended the Chamber of Commerce a, a luncheon, an information luncheon in regards to fuel rebates information. Uh, for anyone out there who burns fuel off road, they will qualify for a fuel rebate. And uh, you, can, you can apply for that at uh, a number of different places, but very educational seminar. Uh, thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for putting that on. On September 23rd, I was uh, in attendance at uh, Dominion Landing for their grand opening of their uh, newest branch in Grand Prairie. Uh, these guys have uh, over 1,700 mortgage professionals offering free expert advice across the country, so welcome to Grand Prairie. I uh, also attended uh, the last uh, joint council, city council meeting with the, with the county. It was a kind of a short meeting, but the, the uh, best part about the, the whole thing was saying goodbye to everybody in the communication level that's really, really impacted our, our community. And um, I also attended the newly renovated uh, Community Village on September 27th with other members of council. Uh, hats off and congratulations to the hard work that's gone into something that our community desperately needs. And uh, on uh, September 30th, I was in attendance at the county for a recreation county joint recreation city, county city joint recreation committee meeting. Uh, some of the things we discussed were the uh, uh, leisure center, renewal of the leisure center agreement. Uh, they are in process apparently right now of looking and trying to hire uh, expressions of interest for a project and construction manager for their new sportsplex that uh, 
is looking to come for hopefully be finished by 2012 if and when they go through with it. Uh, big discussion about the Dave Barr. Uh, they, uh, they told us a little bit about the feasibility study that they did with uh, compared to hockey, hockey ice services needed for the need in Grand Prairie. And they told us that Hockey Canada re uh, really, really, uh, really wants twin pads. It's easier to make money and it, with two as opposed to one. And we also discussed the groups beyond hockey that weren't involved in that, uh, such as figure skating and speed skating and pleasure skating and a number of other different kinds of on-ice activities. Uh, we discussed their small dinosaur park that they are, uh, are putting in, in a pipestone park. And we discussed the reservoir dredging and the uh, reconstruction of our lawn bowling greens at Musk CP Park. I, uh, also that evening I attended the uh, Little Theatre um, Chamber of Commerce Mixer as Dan, Dan pointed out was uh, very entertaining. Uh, yesterday I attended uh, the Going Bald for Boobies head shaving. What do you call a head shaving? It's just a head shaving I guess. but. Uh, Local people got their heads shaved in regards for to raise money for uh, cancer and to support breast cancer in Grand Prairie and breast cancer month. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, along with that, I'd just like to thank everybody for all their hard work and over the last three years. And I wish everybody the best of luck in, in the future and all the best. To the community of Grand Prairie and it's a great place to live and we all love living here and that's why we do this job is to make this place the best place to live. So thank you very much and see you later. Thank you Alderman Dammer. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, this Saturday I attended the All Candidates Forum for Mayor and Council and um, had a much more comfortable seat than many of you here. and. Uh, um, good luck to you all, uh, and, and uh, impressed by some of the, uh, the new folks seeking a seat, uh, some of whom are here tonight. And, uh, however, I did manage to meet with the affordable housing staff on Wednesday about the first draft of the affordable housing master plan, uh, aforementioned, and other housing initiatives. And, and this was partially to report to Grand Prairie's, Grand Prairie's progress at the Inner City Forum. You know, the other members of that forum have expressed admiration on a number of occasions and respect for our communities, uh, for Grand Prairie's Community Services Department and our housing initiative of the past three years. And what we do here affects and inspires uh, uh, other communities too, and hopefully we can learn from each other. Also earlier today with most of the rest of the council and some senior administration here, Bill Walker and Greg and uh, Dan Lemieux, of course, uh, uh, I too had the honor of welcoming those eight new firefighter recruits and just to say that uh, they were nothing less than inspirational, which ties into my final point. I want to say thank you to Grand Prairie citizens for giving me the chance to represent you and to work with my colleagues here for the improvement of the city for the last three years. I've developed a good deal of respect for all of you around these tables, administration included, for your unique strengths, each for your unique strengths and qualities. But also I think of the many that do not show up on the cameras here tonight, the support staff, the firemen, the frontline workers, and uh, even also the employees of the libraries, the galleries, the police, and scores of others whose jobs also partially uh, depend on our, our dollars, um, who all do hard work to make this a better, uh, more humane community and uh, to make us all better people. So uh, Grand Prairie, take it from me. I've had a first-hand look you can be proud of them all. Uh, over and out for me. Thanks again. Thank you, Alderman Radbird. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Um, well said, Alroy. Um, what I want to do is uh, actually my report uh, on Roundtable, uh, Mayor Logan, is, is exactly like Bill's. Uh, add Pursuit of Excellence and a tender opening, and you've got uh, my report. So what I would like to do tonight <laughs> is, uh, is also thank uh, uh, really to, to my colleagues, it really, I, I did enjoy this work a great deal and it was an honor and pleasure to work uh, with all of you. Uh, and I want to dismiss the rumor that it was me that caused Yad and Elroy to choose not to run again. <laughs> I don't think it was anything I said or did. 
Um, uh, on another per more personal note, too, I want to, in this public forum, to... Uh, um, I had some uh, health issues in the family with my granddaughter and my mom and dad, and I, I really want to thank all of you for your friendship and support. It uh, meant and means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Rodburn. So, uh, I guess the last couple of weeks have been extraordinarily busy. Uh, I'll start by mentioning on uh, Tuesday, September 21st, uh, attending the welcoming ceremony for an uh, uh, elder uh, in residence at Grand Prairie Regional College. It's probably not all that well known, but Grand Prairie Regional College, I believe, was the first college in all of Canada to establish an on-campus friendship center and a remarkable achievement in uh, dealing with some of the young Aboriginal students up there, uh, something that was tre tremendously welcomed by the entire community and certainly by them. Uh, there was perceived to be a lack of, uh, of uh, adequate support, so the idea was brought up of having an elder uh, in residence for that Friendship Centre would be available to students. And, of course, we always think primarily of the Aboriginal students, but uh, the role is not limited to that at all. So uh, I think that's another coup for Grand Prairie Regional College, and congratulations to them for that. Also on the date attended uh, reception, uh, at Center 2000 for six of the uh, medical students who were doing the rural uh, training portion up here in Grand Prairie. And uh, the really nice thing about that, I think, was that uh, they all really enjoyed their time in Grand Prairie. And of course, that's our hidden agenda in having participating in this program is that hopefully they'll be looking at uh, establishing themselves in our community. On Thursday, September 23rd, I had the pleasure of dealing with a grade six class. This was from Bazanson, and uh, they had been well prepped by their, well primed by their teacher and had excellent questions, so that was a lot of fun. Um, uh, it's already been mentioned uh, by Alderman Gustafson about the uh, visitation of about four members of council to the community village on uh, September 27th. Uh, but part of that was to present uh, the check for the next stage in the city's uh, capital funding for the uh, community village, and I did want to mention that. And I want to say and, and underline how remarkable the progress has been uh, on the uh, retrofitting and uh, establishment of the community agencies in the community village, a very impressive group. Um, on Thursday, uh, September 30th, I attended the Rural Libraries Conference and brought greetings on behalf of the city of Grand Prairie. And just sort of following in that theme, I was caught reading already today. So I've got my bookmark. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to, uh, uh, seeing as this is the last council meeting of this, uh, of this term, I'd like to thank all of the members of council for the job that you've done. Uh, I believe that we've had a remarkable three years, a tremendous amount of achievement. I think that we can all be proud of that and, and uh, best wishes. There's no more items of business. We are adjourned. All right.